The following is a paid program for Passionist Communications. Hello and welcome to the Sunday Mass brought to you by the Passionist Community. I'm Father Edward Beck here at St. Francis de Sales Church on the Upper East Side of Manhattan. It's July 31st. It's the 18th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We also remember St. Ignatius Loyola and our Jesuit brothers and sisters today, even though the Sunday trumps the feast, I'm sure they're celebrating. Our presider for today's Mass is Father Michael Green from the Passionist Retreat Center, Bishop Malloy in Jamaica, Queens, New York. Our uh, lector is Renald Rameau, and our congregation is St. Camillus Catholic Academy from Rockaway, New York. If you have the prayer guide, please open to the 18th Sunday, and let's begin celebrating it together. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with your spirit. As we come together today, our gospel speaks to us of what God is asking of us, to belong in a special way and to serve others. But there's been times that we haven't always been our very best self. So we ask God's pardon and peace. You were sent to heal a contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. And you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness. That for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says Coelith. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. Here is one who has labored with wisdom and knowledge and skill, and yet to another who has not labored over it, he must leave property. This also is vanity and a great misfortune. For what profit comes to men? from all the toil and anxiety of heart with which he has labored under the sun. All his days, sorrow and grief is his occupation. Even at night, his mind is not at rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. 
you turn back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew but by evening wilts and fades. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth, for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. Put to death then the parts of you that are earthly, immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and the greed that is idolatry. Stop lying to one another, since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator. Here, there is not Greek or Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share the inheritance with me. He replied to him, Friend, who appointed me as your judge and arbitrator? Then he said to the crowd, Take care to guard against all greed. For though one may be rich, one's life does not consist of possessions. Then he told them a parable. There was a rich man whose land produced a bountiful harvest. He asked himself, what shall I do? For I do not have space to store my harvest. And he said, this is what I shall do. I shall tear down my barns and build larger ones. There I shall store all my grain and other goods and I shall say to myself, now as for you, you have so many good things stored up for so many years. Rest, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this night your life will be demanded of you. And the things you have prepared, to whom will they belong? Thus it will be for all who store up treasure for themselves, but are not rich in what matters to God. The Gospel of the Lord. I like this Gospel because 
As you know, during the summer, people have been coming to Jesus and seeing him as a teacher. They see him as someone who's got the answers, and he does. He's not saying it like the rest of people, but he's not only giving them an answer, he's telling them a story. He's using real events in their lives to help them to come to, closer to God. You see, it's very easy for people to get caught up in themselves or to be able to pledge to that unholy trinity of me, myself, and I. But one of the things we know, the closer we come to Jesus, the closer we take the time to look at the world outside of ourselves, we have to take the time to answer at least three questions. First question, who am I? Not just what's in it for me, but who am I and what kind of person do I want to be? How am I helping other people? What's the gifts that I have? Second one is, what do I want? One of the things that are important, because we do have to have stuff, but is this stuff just to benefit myself or do I think of other people? What are the things that are gonna help me to be a better person, to be a, make my parents proud or the school or the country to benefit my family? And lastly, what do I bring? Because wherever you go, whatever situation you're in, you're gonna bring something to the table. And one of the things about it is you have to have something stored up. Not just a lot of bravado, but a caring heart, a listening heart a grateful heart. Some people, they get caught up in other things and they don't think of anything but themselves. Eat, drink, rest, be merry. But God intervened in the story and God intervenes in our lives to say there's something more, to be able to remember all that God is offering us and all that we can be. Sometimes we forget. Sometimes we don't know and sometimes we just don't care. But what is necessary is to be able to take time, to be able to say, God created me, Jesus died for me, the Holy Spirit guides me, so what am I doing? Father Mark Link wrote a book called The Challenge Series. And life with Jesus to follow God is a challenge. It's a challenge to remain good in the midst of all the many things that could take us in a different direction. But we have to make a decision, a decision to follow Christ, a decision to be of ourselves, to pay attention to the things that are going to be beneficial, and also to be able to recognize we don't travel alone. We're not in it alone, and God always provides us opportunities, those near occasions of grace, to be able to make ourselves better and to provide for others, to give good example, to be a person of influence. Yes, it is good to rest. It is necessary to drink, to eat, and God knows we need to be merry, but not to, at the cost of other people, but to be able to join with other people and to recognize God is good all the time. With great confidence, let us ask the Lord's kindness and faithfulness for us and for all God's servants. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the well-being of the human family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elimination of disease, famine, and war, and for an end to hatred and violence, especially in the Middle East and Africa, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the recovery of the sick and the deliverance of the oppressed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our benefactors, the intentions of our television parishioners placed next to the altar, and for Helen and Andrew Chelsky, 
for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we rejoice in your never-failing help. Show us the greatness of your love and answer our prayers in your great mercy. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Graciously gra sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to these gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exultation we acclaim. Holy. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like to do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Ignatius Loyola, St. Paul of the Cross, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that, we may, that in your mercy, with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. My Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks. It's been wonderful celebrating with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Special thanks to St. Camillus Catholic Academy in Rockaway, New York, for joining us here to celebrate at St. Francis de Sales. Next month, the Feast of the Assumption, we have sent you a letter to commemorate that feast and the patronage of Mary. And there's a place to write some intentions and prayer remembrances on that. So if you've received that letter, please begin to send those in so we can place them next to the altar. And if you haven't received it, it's available on the website at thesundaymass.org. Thanks again for your continued generosity, support, and your faithfulness to the Sunday Mass. Have a wonderful week, and we will see you back here next Sunday to celebrate again. The preceding was a paid program for Passionist Communications.